What's up guys, welcome back to another video. So I just want to talk about some big news that came out today. We're getting to that time in the console life cycle where it starts to end and the next one's upcoming and we're gonna get a bunch of information about the next generation of consoles, which is always very exciting. We've gotten information already about the upcoming Xbox and what they're kind of going for. Basically, they're going for like the streaming, Project X Cloud, as well as having a full-fledged console. And we haven't had any information about the upcoming PlayStation until today. So in at, on Wired.com, Mark Cerny, who worked on the PlayStation 4 architecture, did an interview with them, and he pretty much gave us all of the information that we really want to know of what kind of hardware is going to be in the upcoming PlayStation. He didn't call it the PS5, but we're going to go with the PS5 as the name for now. And it's really interesting how this happened. It was very subtle. Basically, this interview just came out and then all of the media outlets picked it up and then everybody started talking about it. But I find it fascinating how this happened because when the PlayStation 4 Pro got announced, they had like that PlayStation experience. And then with like the the first the original PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One and everything was shown off at E3. If you remember, Sony had that big press conference and they made fun of Xbox and everything. And it was all pretty funny how they announced it. But this is just so subtle. They don't they don't show off the console, obviously, but just the information that we've gotten from here is pretty significant if you're interested in the upcoming generation of consoles. So let's just jump right into it to talk about the actual information that we got from Mark Cerny and what's going to be inside the PlayStation 5. So the first thing is that, which is a great thing, is that it's going to be based off of the PlayStation 4 architecture, meaning that it's going to have very similar architecture as a PS4 and that it's going to be backwards compatible to all of your PlayStation 4 games. So it's something that will be able to replace your PlayStation 4 under your TV or wherever you have it. You don't have to keep your PS4 if you want to play those games, which is which is awesome. Like I was really hoping for that. However, I really hope that they do the full, they go the full distance and they actually bring in PS2, PS1, PS3. I know, I know I just, <laughs> I know I went out of order there, but PS2 is probably my biggest significant PlayStation console in my life. That's probably why I went there. But yeah, I hope they have all the other PlayStation consoles backwards compatible. That would just be absolutely amazing because if they're starting with the PS4, I'm sure they're, they're, it shouldn't be that hard to be able to get the architecture in there to be able to emulate and have the PS1 as well as the PS3 and the PS2 because oh, I just did it again. I just went out of sequence again <laughs> because, I mean, if you look at the Xbox, I looked over here because my Xbox is right here, but if you look at the Xbox One, they're able to emulate the original Xbox. They're able to emulate the Xbox 360 on it, and it works really well, and it's just awesome to have. But So that's the first thing that's great about it. Then he went on to talk about some more specs. He went on to talk about how this isn't going to be just a small gap between PS4 Pro and the next and the PS5. It's going to be a big generational gap, and I, I think that's good because between the PS3 and the PS4 and the Xbox 360 and the Xbox One, Honestly, there wasn't that big of a difference. There, there was a, like you saw a difference in the graphics, but it wasn't that moment where, for example, when you went from the PS1 to the PS2, which was just like, wow, or even the PS2 to the PS3 or the original Xbox to the Xbox 360. Those were some of the most wow moments I've, at least I had in consoles. I remember with the Xbox 360, one of the vividly going into like a, a Best Buy and seeing it and seeing Fight Night on there. If you remember Fight Night, I think it was three that came out on the Xbox 360 at launch, and it was just absolutely amazing. Nothing that could have been compared to on the original Xbox. So that moment, this could be closer to that moment with the stuff that's been announced here. So in terms of CPU and GPU, he gave us information on that. The CPU is gonna be based off of the third generation Ryzen processors, meaning that it's gonna be it's not, the console's not com not coming out in 2019. It's probably going to come out in 2020. So it'll be closer to the newer stuff out there. I mean, it won't be, it'll still be behind. Obviously, it'll never be able to compare to a, a PC just because they need to sell it for $400 or $500. But it'll be decent. It'll be a good processor, a strong processor. The third generations that haven't even been released yet for PC, I believe they come out in the summer of 2019. So that that's good. And then for the GPU, it'll be a custom version of the Radeon Navi line. And on top of that, it's going to have ray tracing capabilities, which if you've ever seen ray, ray tracing in, in real life, like you've played a game with it, it actually is amazing. Like it, it makes a huge difference. I've played Battlefield 5 with ray tracing on. And when I look at it 
with it on than with it not on, there's a huge difference with the lighting, the way the light bounces off stuff, and just how realistic things look. It's it's actually really amazing ray tracing. So it's going to have ray tracing, which is great. And then he said this it may have 8K capabilities. And I mean, when he says he's going to have 8K capabilities, it's going to be like when they said the PlayStation 4 had 4K capabilities. Basically, you're going to probably be able to stream Netflix content if they ever get up to 8K or stream videos or watch videos in 8K. If t When 8K becomes mainstream as a TV, which is not even close to that. But you're not going to be able to play games in 8K. At least that's what I think with this. With these specs, I don't think you'll be able to. But we'll have to wait and see. Maybe 8K at very, very low settings, but who knows? We'll have to see about that. I could be completely wrong about that, but that's just what I think by looking at this. Um, he talked about the the memory, which is huge. This is huge. He talked about how it's going to have um, an SSD in it. I can't find it right here in the article, but it's going to have an SSD in the PlayStation 5, which is very good. It's going to increase the load times a ton. It's just going to have everything's going to be faster. You're going to be able to play games faster. They, he talked about he was playing Spider-Man on the PlayStation 5 dev kit with the SSD and how much faster he was able to traverse through the city because of how much faster the game was able to render as he was going through. So just like that, the SSD is a big thing and I think that's great that they're putting an SSD in there. He talked about sound as well. They're really focusing on sound and which I think is great because especially if you're playing games um, online like shooters you really need that 3d audio he talks about it right here the amd chip also includes custom unit for 3d audio that 30 certainly thinks will redefine what sounds can do in a video game which is great sound if you've ever played a game with your headphones on and you have great sound it really makes a big difference for the game and for your experience then he also talked about vr which is good they're still gonna keep going with with vr which i think is great because i think the psvr is a great device he said you'll be able to use it will support the current vr headset but i really hope that they do bring out a new headset um just because it'll be able to really handle a new headset better than the current playstation 4 pro or anything like that so i hope that they do bring out a new headset so all in all this console from the sounds of it with the cpu and the gpu and the ssd those are the three big things it's going to be a lot more powerful it's going to be a lot faster and it's going to be a big upgrade from the PlayStation 4 Pro, which is a good thing, which is a really good thing. It's, and, oh, I forgot to mention, it's going to have physical media, which is great, which I absolutely love. It's going to have physical media, which you can see Xbox is kind of going in the other direction, especially with their Xbox One S all digital that they've announced. But I think that the new Xbox will have physical media as well i don't think we're, re we're there yet for all digital but i just love, have, love having physical media so i'm happy to hear that but yeah cpu gpu ssd all great things i just my biggest question is what's the price of this going to be i don't know how they're going to get this to 400 dollars, 399 which is what ps4 launched at i believe i think it's going to be 499 which may turn some people off but i mean it they'll probably still sell very well. If they can sell for 500 bucks, I think it's, I think still a lot of people will pick it up. And I think that's probably more realistic of where the price is going to be. So yeah, PlayStation 5, we've got our first information on it. I am very excited to hear more about it. They're not going to have an E3 this year, but they are doing their, um, they'll probably have a PlayStation experience where they talk about this in the near future. So hopefully that happens. Let me know what you guys think in the comments about the PlayStation 5, are you excited for it? And are you? do you think it's gonna be able to hit that $400 price point? And do you think this is something that would sell at 500? Just, I'd love to hear what you guys think about this information that came out today, because it's such an exciting time for consoles and for video games. Let me know in the comments below and I'll catch you in the next video.